Hello, witches. It is time for My Favorite Things, Wiser Edition. For this first edition of My Favorite Things, I thought I would go over my favorite wiser books from the last five years. Uh, even though I'm a Llewellyn author, I am still good friends with a lot of people over at Wiser, and uh, I still get review copies of books. And a lot of the books that are here are not only ones that I'm selling in the shop, but they ended up becoming some of my favorite books to recommend. And so um, there isn't any, like this is, I'm not doing this to be like, ooh, Wiser, from a Llewellyn author, or any of that kind of stuff. The really, that animosity doesn't exist in the publishing world. Um, I think just some of our readers think that it does, but it, it doesn't. Um, if you're one of those people who argues over who has the better books, that is so not a discussion that we have um, when you're an author and you're working with the other people. Um, so I'm not going to be slamming anybody with this because uh, these are just my favorite things. These are like really awesome books that I think everyone should check out. Uh, and they just happen to all be from Wiser this time. So uh, if you are uh, somebody who is interested in opening up your horizons and checking out some really cool stuff, then this episode is definitely for you. So the first thing that um, I want to talk about uh, before we jump in is that with this book, this first one that we're going to dive into, I happen to be part of it. I actually wrote the foreword to it. So full disclosure on that one. Um, but it's still a really fantastic book. And so this is uh, The Magical Art of Crafting Charm Bags, 100 Mystical Formulas for Success, Love, Wealth, and Well-Being. And this is by Elohim Leafar. So what I love about this book and why I totally jumped on board when I was asked to write the foreword um, is that not only is Elohim coming from a totally different place than a lot of us are used to when it comes to magical books, um, he wasn't raised here in the States, he, he comes from another country, he has a different background, um, and so magic and mysticism were part of his life in a different way than they tend to be part of our lives. Um, if you are growing up with, you know, Sabrina and all of the stuff like a lot of us did. So when I'm looking at this book the first time and I'm going through the manuscript, I fell in love with the tone. I fell in love with his perspective on things. And while a lot of it doesn't necessarily feel super lined up with what so much of us are used to because we've been spoon fed so much stuff, it opens your mind to the possibilities. And, and it's such a, you know, a lot of us are like charm bags. Yeah, charm bags. There's a lot going on with that. And so Elohim does this fantastic job of just diving into that, not only making it again really accessible, um, but because of his perspective, we're getting to see magic from a different way. And I think that any practitioner, regardless of your skill set, can benefit from that. I absolutely think that we should be learning from each other and different cultures and um, whenever those things are available. And we have that here with this book. So it's a fantastic book. Uh, again, it's The Magical Art of Crafting Charm Bags, 100 Mystical Formulas for Success, Love, Wealth, and Well-Being by Elohim Leafar. Definitely check this out. Okay, the next book um, is probably not going to be a surprise to a lot of people. Um, in fact, some of the a lot of these probably aren't going to be a surprise to a lot of people if you are if you're an avid reader of uh, magical books as they come out. Um, this is Backwoods Witchcraft, Conjure, and Folk Magic from Appalachian. This is by Jake Richards, and so I. I'm from Appalachia. I'm from the mo like one of the northernmost tips of Appalachia, actually. And a lot of when um, I got into the craft, there were a lot of people who swore that that like the the Appalachian folk magic was the only real magic, and yada yada yada. And it made it just like ugh, right? And it and there's a lot of good stuff there. That was the magic that I was raised in. But I was interested in learning other things. And so now here I am, 22 years later, and I stumble onto this book, and it was just beautiful. It was. Beautiful beautiful to see uh, stories and things that I grew up with, um, practices that I saw everywhere, but we didn't really consider them necessarily magical. Um, a lot of that stuff is in here. So I really fell in love with it. And what I liked about it is right now, one of the things in general with uh, what Wiser is doing with their publishing is they've got a lot of American folk magic and hoodoo conjure uh, people writing for them and uh, American traditional witchcraft, that kind of stuff. And so they're covering this really huge swath of material uh, and they're presenting it to us 
through these incredible authors. And so Jake Richards, I haven't met the guy, um, I but I, I really did like this book. I really did appreciate the accessibility and again, it reminded me of home. Um, and it's one that when people are asking about, you know, wanting to get into an accessible form of conjure that wasn't super heady. And, and you know, when they're asking about um, the different, different access points to that magic, this is one that I'm recommending a lot right now. So you should definitely check out Backwoods Witchcraft, Conjure, and Folk Magic from Appalachia by Jake Richards. Uh, the next one is uh, The Big Book of Practical Spells, Everyday Magic That Works by Judica Illis. So the thing with this one is that a lot of us know Judica from her book of 5,000 spells, which is that like giant encyclopedia tome. Um, and it, that's a phenomenal book. Her That whole series is great. However, uh, it you don't really get to get Judica's personality in those books necessarily, because obviously the point was to present you with all of these spells. This is not that. This is totally it's loaded with her personality. You get to like, as I'm reading and I'm hearing her voice in my head, um, and she's she's really prolific when it comes to just what she knows and what she's able to share with a lot of us. And so if you already have those other books, those those big giant fat books that she wrote um, that are really like encyclopedias, this is like the filler you need. This is the thing that'll help bridge everything together and really ties up uh, to me magic in this really beautiful presentable way. And so this is a favorite right now to recommend to people who are looking for spell books. Um, a lot of us collect spell books and uh, this is one that I'm like, no, you definitely want to have on your shelf. So check out The Big Book of Practical Spells, Everyday Magic That Works by Judica Ellis. Uh, the next three, I'm just going to be honest with you and tell you that if I had to pick between which one was my favorite, I really couldn't. Um, I'm, I'm really super excited about one, um, but for really personal reasons, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, but the next three are books that you absolutely should get and you may have looked over without knowing what you were looking over. So first one is Blackthorn's Botanical Magic, The Green Witch's Guide to Essential Oils for Spellcraft, Ritual, and Healing. And this is by Amy Blackthorn. So much anything Amy Blackthorn does is awesome. Uh, and what I really, really like about this uh, is that, so a lot of us love working with essential oils. Um, they are, they're more accessible than herbs are sometimes. And they have a more stable shelf life sometimes, you know, there's, there's a lot to it. Um, and they're a great way of working with the plant without having to, um, you know, necessarily work with other aspects of the plant. So essential oils, it can be this really amazing um, beneficiary kind of component to our magic, but a lot of us don't understand the stuff behind it. So we don't understand where the essential oils actually come from. We don't understand how um, a vibration for that plant is altered when it goes into, you know, that sort of that form um, instead of just working with the raw herb, you know, those sorts of things. And so what we get here is a phenomenal uh, book that's just really this, um, it's, I mean, there's recipes, it, it fits really nicely in with the rest of the, the Green Witch material. Um, and I mean, just anything you can kind of think of with when it comes to essential oils from how to diffuse them to how to put them into uh, salves, and it's all here. Like it's really incredible stuff. So you should check out um, Blackthorn, all of Amy Blackthorn's material. Like seriously, she's one of my favorite authors right now. Um, but you should definitely check out Botanical Magic if you are somebody who works with essential oils in your witchcraft, which again, a lot of us do. Uh, there have been books that I, th I feel have attempted to do what she was successful in doing with this one. So if you're only gonna have one book on essential oils and magic, I think this was probably should be it. All right. Next one is Witch Body by Sabrina Scott. So this is just phenomenal. And it's phenomenal for not just because it's like essentially this graphic novel kind of comic book um, that is teaching you witchcraft without you actually knowing it sometimes. Um, but it, it's really this the main character is a woman, and when I, you know, to be honest with you, the first time I picked it up, I was like, oh, okay, here's another thing written for women on witchcraft. Um, and so I was like, okay, yeah. you know, and it's not that I'm not super celebratory of those things, but I was not expecting to get something personal out of this book. I thought this was just going to be me watching or me reading about somebody else's experience um, as a woman uh, gaining her power and moving through a process of self-empowerment, which I think witchcraft at its essence does for us. Um, and so I was excited just to, for the art. I was excited because yeah, I'm all about girl power and people getting empowerment. But as a dude, I was looking at this like, okay, there's nothing really in here for me. Lies lies uh this was gorgeous it was not just i mean like the story itself is gorgeous it's 
it's a reflection. It's it's almost like we're being taken through a trance working via graphic novel. And a good graphic novel will do that, but often those things are not made for us as witches. Usually we just kind of have experiences as a result, like the Prometheus material. This is phenomenal. This is a great book. This is one that you're not just going to want to put on your bookshelf, actually. Like, I don't have it on my bookshelf. I have it on my coffee table so that when people come over, they can thumb through it and they can take a look. And it, it starts a discussion about witchcraft with everybody. Uh, and it's, it's just really great. So it's one that I'm really proud to have in the store. It's one that uh, if you are a creative person, if you are somebody who learns magic through story, this is this is what you should be looking for. It's a really phenomenal, phenomenal book. So this is Witch Body by Sabrina Scott, aka Sabrina the Inkwitch. All right, last but certainly not least, um, and you're totally not going to be surprised at this one, I don't think at all. But it's Basim Stang Besom Stangen Sword, and I always I always say Basim Besom Stangen Sword um, by Christopher Oropello and Terrell McGuire. Uh, and the subtitle is A Guide to Traditional Witchcraft: The Sixfold Path and the Hidden Landscape. So what I, the reason why I said I'd have like, I have a personal thing with this one is that I've been following these folks for years. And so for over 10 years, I've been, I've been keeping my eye on them um, and the work that they do through their podcast down at the crossroads. And I'm a huge fan. There's a lot of pagan witchcraft podcast out there that I think try to do what these uh, folks are really successful at doing, which is making magic accessible. Um, and I never feel like when I'm listening to them talk that I'm giving that I'm getting a lesson I'm getting a talk into. I really feel like I'm listening to people who are passionate about something talk about what they're passionate about in a way that um, that passion lights a fire. And so I know often when I'm uh, looking for something to inspire me, I look to their podcast or I look to their website for that inspiration. So I'm a big fan just in general. I think they're phenomenal witches and I think that they're really living their magic in a way that um, is is just inspirational for a lot of people. And so I knew the book was coming out and I knew, and they, they came on the show and they were talking about the book coming out. Um, I didn't know that I would love it. I thought, oh, okay, I like these people and they probably have something cool to say. I didn't think I'd love this book. This is something I absolutely adore. And so it's, and the reason why I like it is, so if you listen to their show, if you are somebody who um, it has is privy to that, then what you know is, again, they go through this process of making magic very, very accessible to just about everybody. And they continue that in this book. And they're talking about stuff that usually is really heady or it comes in the form that's just like laced with just a lot of, I don't know, kind of pomp and circumstance for no reason or... Um, it, you're just kind of told to do something without an explanation and, and that's okay if you're just in it for the experience and, and whatever, but this is fixing that. And so this really does fulfill, uh, that job of making this type of magic accessible to just about everybody. And so, you know, it's something that I try to do with my own book series, um, and they have absolutely pulled this off. And I really do pay attention to tone, as I've said that before. Uh, the tone in here is gorgeous. It's really inviting. It's very invigorating. You know, again, a lot of what they do is invigorating. Um, and so I think this is the reason why I love this so much is that regardless of where you're at on your path, wherever you, whatever level of, of uh, in depth that you feel you have to your craft, you're going to get something out of this. This is definitely one that comes with a lot of use not only is you useful information but you get wisdom out of it like actual gems of wisdom about the craft and about working a craft and that is particular to you know a part of the the kind of the witchcraft market world right now niche if you will that is kind of full of a lot of snobbery and it's kind of inaccessible at times and they just plow through that and they're like no this is for you this is why this is for you this is how awesome it is and let's go do it and so it's just great I'm, I love everything they do um, but I really particularly enjoyed this book and I think you will too so definitely check out Bessem Stang and Sword A Guide to Traditional Witchcraft The Sixfold Path in the Hidden Landscape by Christopher Oropella and Tara Love McGuire. All right, that's it for my favorite Wiser books that have come out in the last five years. Uh, again, these are books that you may have seen on shelves and you just kind of passed up because you didn't know what you were looking at. You definitely want to go back. You want to pull them out. You want to take a look. Um, and uh, if you're interested in finding out more about them, you can go to their websites or you can just go to modernwitch.com and uh, there you'll find links and all of that good stuff. So I hope this was helpful if you are looking at filling up your bookshelf in 2020.
Um, this is phenomenal. So this is so phenomenal and spitting.